Now let's have a look at sculpting tools and see how we can smooth out this underbust area here. Let's go back to Blender and we already have our figure in here, but the shirt is now morphed. So if we wanted to isolate the smoothing morph from the sleeve length morph, I have to go and delete my shirt. There we go and bring in the original one again. If I import object, here comes the shirt. And there it is. I can give it a nice color as well. I have to do that by clicking off it, then clicking on it again. And then I can go and use my material options here and just pick a different color. Maybe I'll go something like green perhaps. And then we can go and start a sculpting. So sculpting tools are very similar to the ones in ZBrush. And that's why I thought I'd bring it up because it's essentially a free alternative to ZBrush minus the elegant DAS Studio integration. We get into it by first selecting our shirt. Then we head over to this drop down menu and select sculpt mode. And that'll present you with this interface. So slightly different. We have the brushes we can use on the left hand side. You can also left click and drag to expand this menu here so that you can read what they are. I find that very helpful. Professionals don't tend to use that. They use shift and space. So as you do that, if you click shift and then hold down the space button, you get this big list of brushes from which you can now select them. I'm more happy to left click and drag this out just for the sake of seeing what I'm actually doing here. This is this kind of much nicer for me. The multitude of brushes are frightening, much like they are in ZBrush. But remember, we only really need to use uh, three to four at the max. And right now, let me show you what you can do with the draw and the smooth brushes. So the draw brush is like the one in ZBrush that goes and pushes vertices out along the normal. So if I go and left click and drag here, things will go out. If I go and left click over the sleeve, they go out on the sleeve. So along the normals. Control Z will undo this. You can also sculpt inwards. So out is the default, but if ever you wanted to go in, hold down control and then you sculpt in. So that's true for most brushes. You will just reverse the direction. Control Z undoes that. Up here we have the radius and the strength and most brushes are kind of set to something fairly aggressive and I encourage you to take that down. So 0.5 is probably a little bit too much for our sculpting needs here. So you can left click and drag this value down. So I'm going to go and use something like 0.3. The radius you can set up here or you can use the square brackets that makes the brush bigger or smaller. So if we wanted to correct something in the arm here we do this. Just left click on it and then to smooth something out like we've learned with ZBrush, you would hold down shift and that'll smooth things. And that's not going to sculpt inwards. That's just smoothing things out. You can then go and left click and drag out again in a smooth fashion like so. Now, as I said, it's a little bit aggressive, the default value. I think on the smoothing brush, it's 0.7. And there's no way to adjust it here other than selecting the smooth brush first. And this has now 0.7. So if I go and drag that down also to 0.3, something like that, then I can go and use the smooth brush directly. And that's that's much nicer here. But if I go back to the draw brush now, every time I hit shift and sculpt that I don't see any visual change in Blender, which is really confusing. You just need to know while you're pressing shift, things are smoothing out and they're going to be smooth much less. And then you can go and drag this out with short brush strokes of the of the regular draw brush in Blender. So equipped with that knowledge, we can go ahead and smooth out this kink on her under bust here. So you do that by left clicking and dragging this out and then followed by a smooth pass with the shift key like so. And then you drag this out and you smooth it out again. Drag out, smooth out, drag out, smooth out. And that's essentially most of what you do with the sculpting tools. I'm going to go and undo this because I want to show you how this works with symmetry. There. So symmetry doesn't always work with vertex tools because you have to have a perfectly symmetrical garment for that. But for sculpting tools, it usually does work because it doesn't look at the geometry. It just looks at your stroke and applies it on both sides of the model. So since she is fairly symmetrical, we can use the X symmetry that's up here. If you select that, then when you go and draw something on here, it happens on both sides. So if it is a relatively symmetrical garment like this one is, it's not perfect 
perfectly symmetrical if I look at the collar here and the buttons. Uh, the kind of the middle will work, and so if I go and want to save myself some work, I can go and left click and drag this, and it'll happen on both sides here. Hold down Shift to smooth this out. Drag this out again. Hold down Shift. Drag this middle part out. Hold down Shift to smooth this, and so forth. Smooth, drag out, drag out and smooth. And then all of a sudden, you've got something that is actually fairly usable. And not everything will work with symmetry, so you have to go and switch that off every once in a while. Drag that out, drag that out. And we're kind of getting there, kind of getting there much better than it was before. Maybe just smooth the side out and drag that out again. There we go. So one other thing, well, there's a couple of other things in the Blender smoothing tools I wanted to bring to your attention. It might be helpful to have a wireframe overlay while you're sculpting. So the reason for that is that it lets you see if there are any distortions that you want to work on. So while this looks okay now, I can tell you that the auto fitting process has distorted some of the polygons here and we have more here than we do have here and moving that up a little bit will do wonders for the fit. So to make that happen in Blender you can use this drop down menu at the top. This here switches most of the overlays off including the background if you don't want to see that but this drop down menu gives you additional options of what you want to see here and one of them down here under geometry is the wireframe. By default, it's a little bit strong, so you can tone that down by just taking the opacity down to something like a small overlay. So this is really enough for me, like 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Once again, 0 0.3 is kind of the magic value here. And then you can just go and click out of that, and um, now you see the distortion I was talking about. This is very kind of distorted. This one looks okay, and this looks a little bit squished in. So in order to alleviate that, I can go and use another brush, which is the Elastic Deform brush. And that lets us move parts of the geometry up or down or move it elsewhere. There's in fact, there's two here. There's the Grab brush on the bottom and there's Elastic Deform. They both come in handy. Grab is a little bit more aggressive and literally just takes a part of the geometry that I have selected here and moves that wherever I move the cursor. So it works best when used when it's a little bit larger. And then you can go and nudge the polygons around. So kind of careful with that. If you do it too extreme, it's, it's going to look bad. But the Elastic Deform brush is going to do one better and it will go and move whole parts of our garment up or down like so. So if I go and left click and drag this, you can see what happens with the garment. That's kind of what I want. I'm going to go and move this up like so, up and out. And now I'm going to go back to my, so now this means I'm shifting some geometry upwards and now I'm going to go back to my regular draw brush and use the process I showed you before by just smoothing this out, dragging this out, and that'll now hopefully make the perfect fit here with short brush strokes, dragging this out. And once it's out, it probably needs to be smoothed out again there we go. And it's probably also a little bit baggy on the top, so I might have to go and do a bit of sculpting in. But we'll work on that as we go along. So if you wanted to see what's happening underneath here, you can quickly press Shift Z to go into this transparency mode. And I can see that the clothing is a little bit baggy on the top. So I might want to go and sculpt inwards now by holding the control key down. Or you can go and smooth this, that's also possible, but control to get a little bit of excess away here. And then we go and smooth things, drag things out, smooth them out. And this is how you eventually get that perfect fit here with, with practice, short strokes and with subtlety. So it's a lot of fun to do this. I, if you screw it up, don't worry about it. Just try and do it again. And you can see that the, the, the geometry here, it looks much better than it did before. And once again, with the symmetry, you can try and work here. But this looks just so much better than it did before. So that's really all I'm doing here, holding shift down to smooth things out. And then I'll go and hold down the, hold down control to sculpt inwards and short brush strokes to sculpt this out again. There we go. And while we're here, I'm going to show you one more brush 
before I would bring this into Blender again. The brush that I find really fascinating is the cloth brush, and that is there to emulate wrinkles in your clothing. So something that we have down here, that's a wrinkle, and something that we have down here, that's a wrinkle, or here in the shoulders, those are all wrinkles, and they look really good when they're implemented that way. And these often happen as part of the cloth draping process. We're going to see more about that in the next part when I show you Marvelous Designer and the exciting things you can do with that. But um, there's also a brush that lets you sculpt this in, and that can be found down here under cloth. So if you select that, it comes in usually very large, or it has multiple circles here, and this is where all the, the um, crinkling is going to happen now. So left click and drag and see what happens as wrinkles are being put into your garment. So this, the default is probably okay here. It might need more geometry, so it will depend on your garment how good this looks. But if you use all these things in conjunction, you can make very believable cloth wrinkles here all over your garment. So once again, subtlety is the key, and it's almost like moving a piece of cloth around. Once you've done it, and you know, don't overdo it, of course, you might have to go, whoops, you might have to go back to your regular draw brush and just grab some of these things out again, just so that the wrinkles show on the outside here, much like here as well, short brush strokes. We've got a more wrinkled shirt now, which is really, really cool. And then once again, if there's, if there's other artifacts that have come in that you need to go and get rid of, feel free to do so. Sculpt in, sculpt out, smooth out whatever the situation requires. There we go. That's what we've done here. There. Say this is our change down. I want to bring this back. The procedure for doing that is exactly the same as before. You head out of sculpting mode here, go back to object mode, and then with your shirt selected, you can head over to File, Export, Wavefront OBJ. And I'm going to call this one Shirt Smooth. And once again, the rest should have already not changed. So selection only 100% on export under geometry, keep vertex order and hit export OBJ. That is that. With a bit of luck, this should now be importable in Dash Studio. And we can probably see it on the whole figure. Let me go bring everything back so that we see this in situ, also in filament. This is the shirt before. I'll head over to edit, object, Morph Loader Pro, also or edit figure Morph Loader Pro, same thing, it's the same script that's being queued. And in this case, it really doesn't matter. I'll go and browse to the file that I've just exported here. That is Shirt Smooth. And the only important bit in this dialog is that I need to say reverse deformation. So that's very, very important. If there's one takeaway from this, reverse deformations. Hit OK. Morph has been imported successfully, so that means we've done everything right. If that brings up an error message like geometry mismatch or whatever, that means your export from Das Studio or your export from Blender was incorrect. So those are things you might want to check. And in here we have Shirt Smooth, and this is what that looks like. And that just looks so much better. Now, especially with that shader on there, let me go and put that back to, to zero as a minimum. And have a look at that. That is before... And this is after. And this is just so cool. We've made all that in Blender. And then on top of that, we now have that sleeve length morph that, that works on top of the smoothing morph. So that's just so cool. I'm really pleased with that. I'm really, really happy that I could share this with you. I'm going to link to a live stream that I did recently on the DAS channel. This is just so cool, isn't it? In which I'm showing some of these principles as well on a different example, namely George. And uh, you're more than welcome to watch it. It's freely available on the DAS channel. In our next video, we're going to have a look at Marvelous Designer and see what that can bring to the table in regards to cloth draping. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.